Good morning, everyone. Good morning. God bless you and heaven smile upon you. We thank God for you one more time that you will allowed the Lord to bless you to be in this service one more time in the name of Jesus. We thank God for you. Oh, yeah, on the physical PC. Thank you, Jesus, just for blessing us to be here. Just a little bit of technical difficulty, but we got it. So we thank God for you. We pray that God will continue to bless and keep you by his word and by his spirit. Uh, my name is Pastor Jimmy Thomas. We want to welcome you to New Hope Church of Christ. Uh, my wife, uh, Lady Yolanda Thomas, and I, we welcome you again to another service the Lord has allowed us to be in and to be part of. Um, we want to welcome you again to our service. Our motto is one hope, one soul, one victory. Our goal is to share the word of God um, through his, to encourage his people through teaching and the preaching of his word. And we want to just give honor to our Elder Lyons and Sister Lyons and Evangelist Brandon. Um, Mary Brandon, we thank God for you and being faithful to the ministry of God. And so we just want to thank you for being a part of this ministry. Uh, if you want to know more about us and get more involved with what we're doing, you can reach out to us at newhopecocmd at gmail.com, or you can call us at 443-650-8641, or you can go to our website, is newhopecoc.church, um, New newhopecoc.church. And again, we thank God for you and just being a part of the ministry. And also we're on Zoom and Facebook Live every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. sharp as the Lord has blessed us to be here. And so again, if you would like to um, just share our feed with your family and friends, uh, we would be mostly appreciated. And just as one a public announcement, um, there were, or there are two uh, New Hope Church of Christ um, Facebook pages. One has a dash MD on it and the other one doesn't. So I'm going to be, I uh, found a way to get rid of the wrong one and, and bring the one with the MD back uh, to, to life. Some of you all have the MD and some have the other one. So I'm going to delete the, the, um, the one without the MD, which is Marilyn. And I may be sending you all an invitation to rejoin if you see it, it is not spoof. It is me asking to confirm that you rejoin uh, or join the right um, New Hope Church of Christ. And so um, just as a public service announcement, now I'm gonna be doing that. I'm gonna put something on my Facebook feed, letting people know that I'm gonna be sending something out that is not spoof, it is for real. And I want you to join the, the real New Hope Church of Christ. <laughs> there are two. And so um, we thank God for you again. And before we go any further, I just wanna say happy uh, Valentine's Day to everyone uh, that is coming up tomorrow. So I know I won't be talking to all of you all tomorrow. So happy Valentine's Day. And also continue to remember that this is Black History Month uh, where we appreciate those who had gone on before us and lifted up the, the bloodstained banner just so that we may enjoy the freedoms that we have today. So again, uh, we just want to let you know that we do have our Bible study every Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m. on Zoom. Um, for those who have um, joined through Zoom, we will have our Bible study on Zoom. We do not do Facebook Live on Bible study. Um, we have decided that the Zoom is more intimate, it's more close-knit, and so we get a chance to uh, communicate with each other, um, dialogue. It's, it's just a lot of fun. It's refreshing to be able to participate. So again, welcome to our church, welcome to our service this morning. And we're gonna ask um, Sister Thomas if she will go forward in reading our, or acknowledging our prayer list and all those who requested prayer in Jesus' name. Good morning and may God's richest blessings be upon you. This morning, our prayer list is as follows. We ask that you will continue to pray with us 
as we pray for the following people and families. Uh, Teresa Butler, Olivia Jones, Jackie Price, the Jenny Rojas family, the Jensen family, the Massey family, the Johnson family, Richard Martin, COVID everywhere. Even though the numbers are going down, we still need to be careful. So let's pray that we will continue to adhere to CDC regulations as well as our own common sense. And let's continue to remember those with chronic disease. During the pandemic, those with chronic disease have suffered greatly. People in need of surgeries have been denied because of the virus for fear of them being in harm's way. Now people are trying to catch up, but as a result, some people's health has declined. And we pray that God will restore them and heal them and take them back, at least back to their pre-degenerative states. Let's continue all the, to pray for all those who are caretakers. Remember my father-in-law, Matthew Thomas, in a special way that God will intercede for him. And remember all of those who are in advanced stages of cancer everywhere, those with kidney disease everywhere, those with conditions that cause excessive clotting, nerve damage, Let's just continue to pray for the overall health of our nation and this world. And as always, continue to pray for those who are outside of the ark of safety and don't know who Jesus Christ is, that they will hear, administer the things that he is asking us to and live in accordance with his will. And this is our list of prayer requests for this week. Thank God for you, Sister Thomas. We thank God for just allowing you to have the announcements in the name of Jesus. We're going to read our scriptures this morning. I'm sorry, we're going to have prayer. And then we're going to have our scripture read this morning by Elder Alfred J. Lyons, Sr. <laughs> so let us bow our heads before the Lord in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you again for just watching over us and blessing us to be here one more time. We know, Lord, that there is trouble in the land, but Lord, you are the one who lift us above the trouble. Lord, you are the one that keeps us in the midst of the trouble. We pray, Lord, that you will be that anointing that we need in these last and evil days, that you will be the encourager, the one that wipe away the tears from our eyes. Lord, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. So many are dying day by day, but we know that there is life in the name of Jesus. There is a miracle in the name of Jesus. There is hope in the name of Jesus. We pray that we will continue to bless your holy name and to give you the glory and the honor that is due unto you because we are your humble servant that you have brought out of a horrible pit and you have brought us a mighty long way. When nobody cared about us, Lord, you were right there by our side. When it looked like the devil had taken us out for the last time, you lifted us up, Lord, above all the sin and shame that had come before us. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, that you will watch over us and keep us doing this service. Remember everyone that was named on the list this morning, even those whose name we did not call, but they need a blessing this morning. They need your prayer. They need your word. They need your encouragement. And we pray, Lord God, that you will anoint the word of God this morning, that we shall speak the oracles of God, not at my will, but your will shall be done. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to ask our other line that he would be prepared to read our scripture lesson this morning, and then we will have a sermonic hymn from Sister Thomas, and we will proceed with our word. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Our scripture text will be coming from the 30th division of Psalms, starting at first verse, ending at verse five, and it reads, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou has lifted me up, has not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cry unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept 
me alive, that I should not go down to the pits. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And this is the word of God. Amen. Lead up a prayer, sweet up a prayer that calls me from a world of care. And beats me at my father's throne, makes all my wants and wishes known. In a seasons of distress and grief, my soul is often found relief and often. Escaped the tender snare by thy return, sweet of prayer, sweet of prayer. Sweet of prayer, thy wings shall my petition bear to him whose truth and faith. The way teen us all to bless, and since he bids me seek his face, be.
the land, steal the prize, and a shout for passing through the Amen. Amen. Sweet hour of prayer. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Sister Thomas, for blessing us with that song. We thank Elder Lyons for reading our scripture lesson this morning. And most of all, we thank you for being in the presence of the Lord one more time. Uh, we do give honor to him. And again, I do say happy Valentine's Day to all of you, that the Lord will bless and keep you, and that you do not have to go and see the dentist after today. So we, th <laughs> we thank God for all that he has blessed us with. So we get on with a, a word this morning, uh, this July, this um, February the 13th, uh, 2020. We just want to share a word of the Lord with you. You've heard our scripture lesson being read this morning from Psalms uh, 30 verses one through five, but we want to focus on the fifth verse this morning. I'm sure the last part of this scripture some of you all can quote backwards and forward in your sleep, but I want to try to break it down to understand what David was talking about when he wrote this scripture. Uh, the verse says, for his anger, this is the King James Version, for his anger endureth but a moment. For his favor, in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Our text this morning is, how did you wake up this morning? How did you wake up this morning? If weeping endure for a night and joy comes in the morning, how did you wake up? this morning. If I may use the NIV version of this scripture, it says, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for a night, for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Weeping or trouble shouldn't, should be a temporary situation. It should not last forever. I'm sure you've heard the song, trouble don't last always. As long as weeping endure, joy will not come in the morning. As long as weeping endure, Joy will not come in the morning. So weeping must go so joy can come in. We know the Bible says that light and darkness has no fellowship. They cannot exist in the same space and time at the same time. How did you wake up this morning? Lord, we thank you again for your word. We thank you for watching over us, Lord, and we pray that you would keep us by your spirit. Let us be what you would have us to be. Let us hear what the spirit has to say to the church. Let the words of my mouth, Lord God, be encouraging to someone who needs to hear from heaven. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and is doing for us right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, this is a song for the dedication of David's palace by David around 64, 164 BC. At the dedications of David's house, David wanted God to be praised. 
not himself. It says nothing about David's house, rather it focused on God and his greatness and his goodness and his deliverance. This is usually classified as an individual psalm, uh, individual psalm of praise and or thanksgiving for deliverance. Although this psalm was composed for the purpose of being used for the dedication of David's house, it was in the shadow of some important circumstances of his past life, particularly of his feeling in the time of danger, illness, and of his obligation on his recovery to redevote himself to God. David gives this praise. If I may break down the scripture just a little bit, in the first verse it says, I will extol thee. I will extol you and glorify you. I will exalt you and glorify you, Lord, because you have lifted me out of death and sin and you have not allowed my enemies to triumph over me. He goes on to say, Lord, my God, when I call to you for help, you look beyond my faults and saw my needs and you healed me. Uh, he goes on to say in the third verse, you, Lord, brought me out from the land of death. You spared me from going down to the pit. And then he goes on to say, David, shift to encourage the saints to sing the praises of the Lord and to give thanks and the remembrance of his righteousness and his goodness and his mercy, his loving kindness and his grace to praise his holy name. And then in the fifth verse, he recalls, he tells, he said, now after you have called on God and give him the praise, let me tell you why. Let me give you the reason why you can give, you should give God the praise. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Oh, hallelujah. This is in contrast between the momentary nature of God's anger with his people and the lasting love and favor he holds for them. Aren't you glad that God's anger is only but a moment, but his love and favor is everlasting? Hallelujah. In the New Testament, we may use the vernacular or the vocabulary. We may say something like this. We may say, it might say, the correction or discipline of God is for a moment, but his grace abideth forever. How does that sound? Remember that term, grace, that we're teaching on right now in, in, in Bible study? His grace lasts forever. This description of God slow to anger, to his readiness to save, have been attributed to his character down through the ages. No matter what situation man find himself in, God's find himself in, God has a wrath and God has a saving grace. David gives a testimony of his own life. He says here, there were many tearful nights because of his disobedience to God's word and God's will. Uh, we have found and we know that chronologically, Psalms 51 was written before Psalms 30. So let us look at the scriptures. So as David gives a testimony of his own life, he talks about weeping may endure for a night. During the night of weeping, David asked the Lord to have mercy upon him according to his loving kindness and tender mercy. He asked God to remove or blot out his transgressions that was be forever before him. During his night of weeping, David asked the Lord to wash away all of his iniquity and cleanse him from his sins. During his night of weeping, 
David let the Lord know that every time I turn around, my transgressions are ever before me. Oh, hallelujah. During his night of weeping, he let the Lord know that his verdict and his judgments are justified. How did you wake up this morning? During the night of weeping, David asked the Lord to purge him and wash him so that he may be whiter than snow. Hallelujah. Once you have been purged, uh, once you have cleansed me, let me hear the joy and gladness of your salvation. Let the bones which you have broken and crushed, uh, let them rejoice again. During his night of weeping, uh, David realized he needed the Lord to create in him, uh, oh, hallelujah, a clean heart and the right spirit. Uh, oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, during his night of weeping, Weeping, David realized that he had lost something. He had lost the joy of the Lord. And he said to the Lord, I need you to restore to me the joy of my salvation. Or should I say the joy of your salvation? And the Lord uphold me and with his free spirit and with his loving kindness. Look at how David looked at the morning. He transitions and Lord, I look at, as I'm weeping during the night. I'm doing an examination of myself. How many times when we're going through something that we look at yourself and not blame others. So as David was weeping through the night, he realized there was something in his life that he had lost. He had lost the, the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. He had lost, uh, thank you, Jesus. He had lost his shout. He had lost his praise. He had lost his smile. He had lost his positive reading. He had lost his desire to be with the saint. He had lost his desire to be in the presence of God. I have lost something here, but I'm weeping all night long. But look at how David transitioned to the morning. In the morning, thank you, Jesus, David reflect on his relationship with God and realize that joy will come in the morning. If I can just hold on just a little while longer, my joy will come. Perhaps David was reflecting on the words of lamentations that let us know that it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassion fail not. They are renewed every morning. Maybe David was looking at that for a minute. How did you wake up this morning? David come to embrace the fact that in the morning, the Lord will deliver him from his guilt of bloodshed. In the morning, his tongue will give praise unto God for his righteousness. His lips will give praise and declare his mercy. In the morning, David had looked back and reflected on Psalms 23, and he declared that the Lord is my shepherd uh, in the morning. Uh, David may have looked back and remembered that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This should bring joy to all of us. Oh, in, on your worst day. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This should bring joy on your best day. This should bring joy. So in the morning, as David sought the Lord, he heard him say, he delivered me from all my fears. In the morning, David identified himself as a poor man that cried. And the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his trouble. In the morning, David declared a testimony. He said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Once you have experienced the goodness of the Lord, you are blessed because you trusted in him. Oh, how did you wake up this morning? For some of us, how we went to bed last night, it determined how we woke up this morning. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And some people say, well, I got up on the wrong side of the bed. I don't know if there's a right or wrong side, but how you got up will determine how your day will go. 
So we find here that if you go to bed with, a tr with trouble on your mind, causing you to toss and turn all night long, there's a good chance that you're gonna wake up the same way if you slept at all. Thank you, Jesus. David is letting us know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Somewhere between midnight and 12.01, God will bring joy to your situation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Behold, we see the enemy no more because the one you saw yesterday, you will see no more today. How did you wake up this morning? Did you wake up the same way you went to bed, weeping? Did you wake up with the joy of the Lord in your heart? Did you wake up with new mercies this morning? Did you wake up with a song in your heart? Did you wake up with a victorious attitude? Did you wake up knowing the Lord will make a way out of no way? Did you wake up healed this morning? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Did you wake up knowing that everything was going to be all right? Did you wake up feeling the anointing and the power of God working on the inside? Hallelujah. How did you wake up this morning? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let me leave you with this little story. Oh, thank you, Jesus. There was a man. His name was Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson did all he could to live a life that is pleasing before God. But, uh, but, but see, but just a little while, but just like the rest of us, Mr. Johnson ran into trouble during the journey we call life. Mr. Johnson had sought to help uh, from different places. Uh, he sought out counselors. Uh, he sought out friends. Uh, he sought out a family. He sought out the pastor. But however, nothing seemed to help Mr. Johnson. Nothing seemed to help his state of mind. Nothing seemed to help his situation. However, Mr. Johnson woke up one morning. He woke up this one morning more depressed and more worried than ever before. It had been a long, restless night. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let me give you a little bit more background about Mr. Johnson. He had lost his job. His health is failing. He felt that nobody cares. His current situation had become devastating. He often was in fear and worried about tomorrow. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, just as he was getting out of bed, uh, which was going to be the most biggest accomplishment for the day. Am I on your street yet? Uh, can you relate to what I'm saying? How many of us uh, can relate to Mr. Johnson this morning? So you may, you may have carried, uh, you may not be carrying his cross, but you are carrying a cross. So uh, on this particular morning, uh, he was, uh, he had a breakthrough, a moment that would change his outlook and began the process of healing. As he was laying in bed on his side, uh, uh, facing toward the window, uh, contemplating another long day of heartache and disappointment, uh, he he noticed the morning sun rays uh, peeking through the blinds. Uh, seeing the sun this particular morning uh, filled him with a sense of hope and joy. He thought to himself, he said, self, if the sun rise every morning, despite the weather or any other situation that it has to face, so can I. He thanked God for this simple revelation. And he realized that on the other side of darkness, other side of disappointment, on the other side of abuse, on the other side of loneliness. There was a life of sunshine. Oh, thank you, Jesus, waiting to rise and bring forth a beautiful blue sky. So let me just go ahead and tell you, he was looking forward to a day full of hope, a day full of peace, a day full of healing, a day full of God's love. So that brings me back to our scripture lesson this morning. Oh, weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Mr. Johnson's circumstances didn't change instantly that day, but in that moment, he realized that God 
was not finished with him, that he had a future waiting for him. And if we look at Jeremiah 29 and 11 in the NIV version, it says, for I know the plan I have for you, declared the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans for hope for your future. So don't you know that when you wake up in the morning, God will give you joy. So God helped Mr. Johnson to expand to see his future. And he went on, he, Mr. Johnson realized that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. God let him know that his present circumstances shouldn't hold him hostage but, or stop him from moving forward in his purpose. Oh, let me say that one more time. Your present circumstances uh, what you're going through right now shouldn't stop you from moving forward and moving in God's purpose for your life uh, to help you discover his gifts uh, to live the life that God has desired for you I know that this is a simple revelation oh thank you Jesus just on the other side of darkness disappointment abuse and loneliness there is a shining S-O-N waiting to rise and bring forth salvation, healing, joy, and peace in your life. There is a sun that wants to shine in your dark life. He wants to bring life into that situation. You may feel that nobody cares. You may feel that nobody understands, but there is a sun S-O-N that is waiting to shine. If you can just endure for the night because the night is only one night but the Lord will bring joy he will bring the joy of the Lord in the morning I just love to see a beautiful sunrise as the sun comes up oh there is no multicolors and there is a hope that today is going to be all right did you know that sometime back in the day in the farm agriculture that the farmers would really they would plan their day based on how the sun rises in the morning. They would know whether to go out and plant or to go out and harvest. Don't you know that God is letting you know that the sun is rising in your life? It is time to go out and receive the salvation of the Lord. It is time to get up and receive his blessings. It is time to get up and receive his anointing. How did you wake up this morning? Did you have a song in your heart? Did you know the Lord was going to make a way? Were you looking forward to the word? Were you praying that Lord will send you something? Were you trying to say, well, just one more day that I have to go through? But the Lord is letting you know that I can bring you joy in the midst of this sorrow. I can bring you joy in the midst of your heartache. I can bring you joy in the midst of your loneliness. I can bring you joy when nobody else can say what is right. God said, I don't have to say nothing. I can just put my arms around you and you will feel the anointing. You will feel my presence because we don't see the wind go. We don't see where it's going and we don't see where it's coming from. We just see the effects. And so God is letting you know, you may not see me coming. You may not see me going, but you sure will feel my effect. Woo, hallelujah. God is making a way for you. How did you wake up this morning? Did you wake up with a mind that was renewed? Did you wake up with an attitude that it's going to be all right today? Did you wake up saying, I just want to hear a word this morning. I need to be encouraged this morning. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Did the devil beat up on you all week? And then Saturday, he just threw a little extra and you went to bed praying to Lord. I just need to hear a word from you. I'm letting you know this morning the Lord is asking you, how did 
that you wake up this morning. I know you went to bed with your tears in your eyes. Ah, but how did you wake up this morning? I know you left trouble on the other side, but how did you wake up this morning? I know you fussed at your spouse, but how did you wake up this morning? I know your children got on your last nerves, but how did you wake up this morning? I know you didn't read your word before you went to bed, but how did you wake up this morning? I know you got bills on Saturday that came in the mail. Well, they don't have to come in the mail no more. They will come in your email. I know you got a bill that came in, but how did you wake up this morning? I know you got some bad news yesterday, but how did you wake up this morning? I know, I know, I know, I know, but how did you wake up this morning? Did you wake up knowing the Lord was going to make a way out of no way? Did you know that I'm going to be all right? Did you know that my bridge will be there when my troubled waters come? Did you know, did you wake up knowing that there will be a light that will light up my pathway? Did you wake up knowing that there will be a lamp that's going to guide my feet? Did you wake up this morning knowing that even though yesterday was a bad day, oh, today is going to be a good day because I woke up with my mind stayed on the Lord. How did you wake up this morning? Thank you, Jesus. How did you wake up this morning? Did you wake up knowing the Lord was gonna lift every burden? Did you wake up knowing that he was going to take the crooked and make it straight? Did you wake up knowing that he was gonna put a little bit more food on your table? Did you wake up this morning knowing that he's gonna make your enemies be at peace with you. Better yet, make them your footstool. Did you wake up this morning calling on the name of the Lord? How did you wake up this morning? Only you can answer that. But the word let us know that during your weeping, there is some self-evaluation so that when you wake up, when that joy between midnight and 1201, God can change everything. It don't even have to be it's like they have what they call nanoseconds from the time midnight strikes to the nanosecond of the next morning. God has already made a way. I believe the Bible tells us in the moment of a twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. That same moment and twinkling, God can make a way. God bless you, my family. We pray that God will continue to bless you. As heaven smile upon you. How did you wake up this morning? I would tell you to turn to your neighbor but some of y'all, a lot of y'all sitting there by yourself. So I want you to send in the chat the question, how did you wake up this morning? Send it to your mom, to your brother, to your sister, to your best friend. As you say, your friend girl, homeboy. How did you wake up this morning? Did you wake up blessed of the Lord? Did you wake up with a smile on your face? Did you wake up with a renewed commitment to serve God, did you wake up ready to run on to see what the end is gonna be? How did you wake up this morning? Thank you, Jesus. We ask if anyone desire to come to the Lord this morning, to come, uh, reach out to us. We will baptize you. We will lead you to Christ. We will lead you to salvation. We will teach you his ways of the word, not our philosophy, not our tradition, but the word of God. Reach out to us in the name of Jesus and God will do the rest. Thank you, Jesus. I think the scripture says Apollo planted, Paul watered, but God give the increase. We want God to give the increase. So we ask that you would reach out to us through our website, 
through our email or call of a, call us and we will reach out to us through the Facebook feed. If you want to put a comment in and say, I want to be saved. I need the Lord in my life. I'm tired of waking up the way I went to bed. I'm tired of waking up with my pillow soaked with tears. I'm tired of waking up with disappointment and heartache, the same one that I went to bed with. Because all you're doing is carrying your situations from day to day to day. Give God the chance to bring joy in the morning. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you and heaven smile upon you. Again, we thank God for you. We thank God for all of those who participated in the service this morning through Zoom and Facebook Live. We pray that you will be able to bless this ministry through your giving, through uh, your giving our, our donation to the word of God, that we may build the kingdom of God and to get a building for the Lord, that we may be able to physically work, worship in together. Uh, you can give to us through our cash app, which is dollar sign New Hope COCMD. Or you can give to us through Zelle, uh, which is uh, our email address, newhopeclcmd at gmail.com. Or you can go to our website and give there securely through our web link. It is all there. There is no mystery on how you can give. Um, if you want to give, if you can give, please give that the Lord will give back unto you and bless you where he would not have room enough to receive. And I, that scripture is so true. That scripture is so true. So we thank God again for you. And we thank God for your patience and for your participation. And as Bishop Farrell would always say, I thank you for your ministry of presence because you are present here with us today. That is a ministry within itself. God bless you and heaven smile upon you. We're gonna discontinue our Facebook live feed and we will stay on Zoom for a moment of fellowship and fellowship. God bless you and have a smile on you. Thank you.